to train the night owl from Washington to Boston struck a work train that was on the same track. The two engines and ten cars jumped the track with one of the engines rolling down an embankment. Passengers on the train were shaken up. There was a jolt and a loud noise. The car slung. Most of the injuries were minor. One passenger called it a hundred to one shot that nobody was killed. ...into a track repair vehicle on the tracks in Chester. Amtrak says the man apparently responsible for the collision is missing tonight. Miraculously, nobody was killed. Friday night, and the big story on Action News tonight is the latest on the Amtrak crash in Chester, Delaware County. We are now looking live at the crash scene as more than 50 workmen toil to clean up the mangled mess of twisted track and derailed cars. Amtrak says it will be at least tomorrow morning before a normal number of tracks are reopened to train traffic. Right now, one track is serving trains in both directions. The nightmare on the Amtrak night owl happened at 12.30 for this morning. According to track officials, Amtrak officials, a switch to divert the passenger train on the way from Washington to Boston to a clear track about one mile before the crash site. As soon as the switch is on for him tonight, this was the result of his apparent mistake. The night out, out into a machine around the closed track, which found in gravel below the tracks. The collision seriously damaged the work vehicle, sent one locomotive from the passenger train down a 60-foot embankment. Another locomotive and two baggage cars landed on their sides. 24 people were injured, but the reason no one was killed is that none of the passenger cars on sides, despite the fact that 10 cars tracked, all the passenger cars managed to stay upright. Otherwise, cars carrying 100 people might have plunged down the embankment and that a tragic. Of the 24 people injured, only two were still in the hospital tonight, the engineer of the passenger train and a passenger from New York. Passenger low by banks fled to by where they bought at Third Street Station in Philadelphia. By London, we spoke some passengers. Locomotive first on the trolley this morning. It's been placed on a flatbed truck. One of the priorities, obviously, here is to clean up the massive wreckage. And that unusual sight of seeing a locomotive sitting in the middle of Yarnell Street is part of it. The other priority is locating that tower control operator who officials believe holds the key to the cause of this crash. He's been identified by Amtrak as Tom Connor of Alden, Pennsylvania. Now, they're still trying to locate him to question him about the cause of the crash. Train traffic in the area is controlled by this tower. They call it Hook Tower. It's located near Marcus Hook, south of the crash site. There are four main tracks in the area, two northbound, two southbound. The site of the crash is track two. Eyewitness News has obtained a copy of the Amtrak log which shows what happened before and after the crash. It shows that at 10.06 p.m., a work train was routed onto track two, shutting it down to service. At 12.33, the log reports that train number 66 was routed onto track two, thus putting it on a collision course. At 12.40, the log reports that the tower operator could not be contacted, that he had apparently left the tower. At 12.42, the log says the derailment and the crash of train number 66. While they clean up the wreckage, railroad officials obviously have a lot of questions they want to ask the tower operator. It's clearly the case here that we had a track out of service that shouldn't have been occupied by a passenger train. Uh, and that's certainly a scenario we're going to be looking at, and the NTSB, NTSB is going to be looking at very carefully. But at this point, until we have an opportunity to talk to the tower operator and review all the records for both the operator and the dispatcher, it's a little hard for me to speculate on it. Meanwhile, the formal investigation into the crash has been opened by the National Transportation Safety Board. We're not going to make up our mind today or next week. We're simply in a fact, initial preliminary fact-finding uh, posture. The Okay, here's the situation right now. They should be taking this locomotive out of here to the Wilmington shops. They still have at least two or three days work here at the crash site in Chester. That's the very latest live from Chester. Steve, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Dick. Today's accident is the second major Amtrak crash in just over a year along the Northeast Corridor. On January 4th last year, this was the scene after the Boston-bound Colonial collided with the Conrail freight train near Chase, Maryland. 16 people were killed, 175 injured in that crash. An investigation of last year's crash 
found that the Conrail crew had failed to observe stop signals. A recap now of what we know about last night's Amcrap accident. Authorities are looking for the operator of the Marcus Hook control tower. He apparently fled the scene after a train with 100 people aboard rammed a huge railroad maintenance machine that was on the tracks in Chester. Railroad investigators think he may have had an error uh, that contributed to the wreck. 24 people hurt. Most of the relatively minor injuries, only the engineer remains hospitalized. Amtrak trains are running late today in both directions between Boston and Miami. In other news tonight, eight people have been treated for minor injuries caused by a SEPTA trolley accident. It happened on the Route 23 line at Germantown and Gowan in North Philadelphia. Authorities say two trolleys were involved in a rear end. There was a grinding, crunching noise, and uh, I was at the lower berth, and I got tossed out. The accident happened on the main Washington to New York line, south of Philadelphia in Chester, Pennsylvania. There are four tracks at that point. Numbers two and one are for northbound trains. The work car was one like this, a ballast adjuster, which smooths the roadbed. It had moved onto track two two hours before the accident. And a switchman on duty at the Marcus Hook Tower says he threw the switch so trains would be diverted away from the work car. But a new switchman replaced him an hour before the accident, and somehow the switch was turned back. So the passenger train was directed right into the work car, shoving it a mile down the track until it jammed against a bridge abutment and cars went flying. Late today, startling information from the federal government official who oversees railroads, John Riley. Now, the man who was operating the signal that sent the Amtrak train onto the wrong track fled the property immediately after the accident, and we've been looking for him for the last 16 or 17 hours. And the problem with that is that he fled the property before anyone could get a statement from him, to get a drug test from him, to get an alcohol test from him. And now, 16 or 17 hours later, I'm not sure how useful all those tests are going to be. In fact, investigators say at this point, an alcohol test would be absolutely meaningless and a drug test of very limited value. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. ...busy northeast corridor. The mishap early today resulted in multiple injuries and wreckage strewn over a three-block area. Once again, authorities say human error was involved, and they're seeking a railroad worker to find out what happened. Richard Schlesinger tells us about it. Early this morning, Amtrak's Night Owl was speeding from Washington to Boston when the 10-car train went onto a track that was supposed to be closed for maintenance. After slamming into some maintenance equipment, one locomotive slid down an embankment. All the passenger cars derailed but stayed upright. 130 people were on board, 24 were injured, none seriously. People were wild. They were screaming, and I think everyone broke into spontaneous prayer. And there were, I, I guess I wasn't really paying attention. I was praying myself. Accident investigators are focusing on the operator in the railroad control tower, who they say switched the train to the wrong track and then disappeared. The person who was at the key switch, at the key light, at the key signal, disappears immediately after the accident before we can get an alcohol and drug test, before we can get a statement. And now we're nearly a day later and we still haven't found him. This was the second accident in a little more than a year along the Northeast Rail Corridor between Philadelphia and Baltimore. Last January, the Boston-bound Colonial collided with another train. 16 people were killed and 175 were injured in that wreck. Today, passengers on the Night Owl were scared and dazed, but considered themselves lucky. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, New York.